Hello everybody. <clears throat> We're going to be working on a knitted teddy bear today. Just stopped in a little bit early. Um, Marie, I think it was Marie. Yes, Marie was um, asking for assistance with a knitted teddy bear. Um, I did link the pages off of Pinterest in my bio for the teddy bear. Anyone interested in making it along with me? <clears throat> I don't know what weight yarn they used, but they were talking about a size 2 knitting needle, which is very small, which they were probably using sock weight yarn. For me to do it in sock weight, it would be very hard for you to see. So I'm going to step up to a sport weight yarn, which is not much bigger. And I'm going to be using a size 3 knitting needle um, today. Uh, it did call for a size 2, so we're not going up too big in the needle size, but the weight of the yarn is a little heavier, so it should come out to the same size as uh, the 12 and a half inch tall teddy bear. So while everybody's coming in and I'm waiting to see if Maria is here, she was supposed to be here at 9 didn't want to get started until she gave me a heads up and says hey I'm here but this also gives everybody a chance if they want to follow along that they can um, click the link in my bio it would be page um, one and two of the teddy bear the first page is just the materials page which again they don't give a whole lot of information so it gives you time to Collect what you might need if you wanted to follow along. And we're going to show the cast on and how to go about doing a knitted stuffed animal. Still waiting for, um, I don't know if I've had any comments yet, just everybody joining in. Waiting for Maria, or Marie, I'm sorry. And we are going to do a knitted teddy bear. I can show you a quick picture here on my, <clears throat> my tablet. We're going to start on making this teddy bear today, and it is knitted. Anyone who wants to follow along is welcome. If you can't stay and you would still like to see this, I do post these to my YouTube channel. And there is also a link in my TikTok for the YouTube where you can go back and, and watch if you need <clears throat> to at a later time. <clears throat> But that's what we are going to be working on today. Still kind of waiting for Maria to show up. Um, maybe I can just show you one of the items that I'm working on while we're waiting for Maria to show up. <coughs> Excuse me. That way at least we have something going on on this live. I'm working on a, this is the big comfy sweater that is in my profile, the all gray sweater. I've got the sweater band here at the bottom, nice and soft and squishy. And then I've done some pattern work in where it was just a straight stock and it stitch. And I've been working on this a little bit at a time. There's 396 stitches per row and with the color work and trapping all the floats underneath it takes me a little while to get a row done. So and this one's the one that's done off a graph pattern and I just picked the colors that I wanted to use. I, I used the same pattern in a stroller size blanket for um, an infant and um, I used one of the Caron cakes that had the color fade. It was like um, it started out a light blue and went to a darker blue and went out to a lighter blue and then into grays. 
and that color fade just went right through where this design is and I left all this background a white color and it was just really really pretty the way the color faded from the top to the bottom then I decided to use that same pattern since I already had it rode out to go in this sweater still conning waiting to see if Marie's coming in mm -hmm. hopefully she'll give me a heads up when she comes in so we can go ahead and I can help her work on this teddy bear I could even put this pattern if I wanted to in the body of the teddy bear if I use a small enough yarn I could put a little pattern like this in there. It would really be simple to do. You just have to match up your your stitch count to the pattern that you want to do. I'm going to do the whole teddy bear just like this. All just this. Um, yes, you can crochet this pattern as well. Um, this one I found on Pinterest. It was just a graph pattern. Um, I knit with two hands when I'm doing color work like this where I have to trap the floats. I have one color in one hand and one color in the other, and I'm working both. Um, I do have videos. Hey, Bridget from New Jersey. Thank you. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, I can work both. The only time I do the um, left-handed knitting is when I'm doing color work. But, yes, um, I think, let me see, move this out of the way. Lisa Day, yes, you can do this in a crochet pattern. It's just a graph, and you do it like a crochet graph gan in two colors. You sure could. So, yeah, I'm slowly working on this, and I have I have like seven projects going at one time. So I, I, I've got a lot of stuff to keep me busy. Thank you. All I did was, um, when you have a sweater pattern, you have a stitch count for knit. Or if, if it's crochet, you have a stitch count as well. As long as the graph pattern that you want to use matches up with the stitch count. Or you can take, hey Brooks, how you doing? Or you can take and add a couple of stitches evenly across the bottom rib row of the sweater. And you can do this pattern right in it. And that's all I did. I just increased a couple stitches. Good morning, Debbie. How are you? We're going to be working on a knitted teddy bear. Yeah, this is actually, you would think that this was a white color. It is not. Um, I am using this color right here, which is more of a cream color. And it actually, the... <clears throat> The maroon of this one, which is more of a dark fuchsia color, makes this look more like white. But this is a cream-colored yarn. But yeah, putting them both together. Oh, my morning's going pretty good so far today. Waiting to see if uh, Marie is in. We were going to work on a um, knitted teddy bear today. For anybody that's new here, um, you might want to check out Brooksy if you're looking for some silicone bead Susan Bates crochet hooks. She's got some. So, thank you for the shares, Brooks. Yep, check her out. Get crafty, Brooks. Oh, yeah, get that laundry done, girl. Get that laundry done. Can't have the kids running around naked. Oh, no problem. No problem. I shout out everybody that's out there busting their can, trying to do their thing. And it reminds me when you jump into the live. Oh, there's another one. Working hard, working hard. Home hooking, how are you doing this morning? She's got an event coming up, too, in Illinois. Morris, Illinois. Forest Fest, June 3rd. She's got lots of wearables, a few stuffed animals. Check her out. 
But I don't know if Marie's here yet. Still waiting to see. 200 items. Well, I'm going to promote you through the roof and see if we can't sell all of those 200 items. Um, this one here, did, um, I can't remember if these were the 15 millimeter beads or the 19 millimeter beads, but this has got a nice grip on it. And I mean, I, I really don't even have to tighten my hand up on it, which is the great thing about it. Um, yeah, she's got the 15 millimeter beads and the 19 millimeter beads. Um, I don't know if she's getting any larger ones. Um. Miss Brooks there. But yeah, you can check her out at um, Get Crafty Brooks. She's on Etsy. She's here on TikTok. But yeah, home hooking. We're going to help you sell all 200 items. And hopefully, you know, you can get rid of a whole stack of business cards. Hey, K Ro, what you doing? Oh, well, I do upload all of these videos, all these lives from TikTok do go to YouTube. So they're there forever. Um, I do label them um, the same as I do here. So it'll be part one, part two, um, probably part three. I don't know. Um, I was hoping to start today, but I haven't seen Maria in here yet. And uh, thank you for the follows. We're just kind of doing a little spin-off here from class. We had a, a student ask um, about an assistance with a knitted teddy bear. And uh, I was uh, I had posted it um, a link for the pattern that we're going to be working through for anyone who wants to follow along or would like to do this later on. Um, again, this video will be uploaded to YouTube. So, <clears throat> I don't know whether to get started or just try to do something else today. So, I did have to do another video too. I've been working on my um, vintage smoker's jacket for those of you who follow me. I've got it up on the dress dummy and I did take some pictures this morning. I need to take a few more and I can show you the progress currently. Um, I do have the sleeves blocked on a uh, blocking mat here in the same room directly in front of me over that way. I'll be taking those off the mat today and hopefully I'll be able to get those sewn in and the side seams done today. Might work on those later on this evening. Thank you for the follows. Crocheting in the round. Were you still working on that bucket hat, Debbie? Or did you see me working on that bucket hat? My mind just won't grasp. I, I don't know what I'm doing. There's something that I'm not doing right. Not starting off the stitch right. Yeah, I know home hook and I've got it, but I just had to take a break from it and I had to pull it all out. My mind was just like, uh, -uh not right now. So we had to put that in the um, timeout bucket, but we'll come back to it. <clears throat> Might try one of the patterns that you suggested. <clears throat> Where you just work it in the round and you don't do all that joining. It might be a lot better and not have the seam on it. Yeah, you ripped it apart a few dozen times. I try to make sure that I check the patterns out before I do them on the live. But I wanted to be real, raw, truthful, and honest and let you guys just see 100%. And we just took that one and ran with it. So... Yeah, I guess you could just keep right on going. Round, round, round. 
But for the purpose of teaching, I would just like to, um, I can show you here real quick. I've got yarn sitting right here if you'd like to see a crocheted circle. Yeah, just don't slip the stitch. Just go in where it would normally slip the stitch and do the next stitch on the next row. I'll have to try that. But Debbie, I can show you a crocheted circle here real quick and easy. Because I got everything just sitting right here. And we'll wait and see if... Um... All right, home hooking. I know you're busy trying to get house and kids and business and everything going so we'll uh check you out in a little bit most people will secure this on and then chain four and secure it back in to the first stitch to make a circle i'll show you that way and then i will also show you the magic circle how to start out um and this way you just chain four and if you are a, a, an avid crocheter, I'll back this back up here to the first one. For anybody who's new to crochet, I just secured this on here with a slip knot. And actually a chain is just the matter of pulling this string here through this loop to make another loop. And it is called a chain because of what it looks like. It looks like a chain. Well, the old days, we used to just go back here into this first stitch and attach it with the slip stitch. And then you had the hole there in the middle that you could work however many number of stitches was dictated by your pattern. Um, the new way that I like more so is what they call the magic circle. Yes, magic circle. I do a slip knot like this. I hold the, the yarn here with these two fingers, wrap it around my index and middle finger, make a little X in the back, flip it over to the front. You should have two separate strings and I just hold it over here with my pinky. Go through underneath, grab this yarn and when I come through here, I give it a little, just a little twist so that it stays on the hook. Then I come over here and I'll grab this yarn that I'm holding, which is the yarn going back to the skein, and I'll pull it through that loop. When I let everything go, this one is going to be woven around this one just a little bit. It's going to be a little twist. You don't want to undo that because we're going to work over this portion here. And this allows you to put however many stitches you want in here. And you're not limited to, you know, eight or whatever else because you've got this tiny little circle because you've only done four chains. So I like doing it this way more. It also allows you to tighten up that hole in the middle. So I like doing it this way. Whatever stitch you're going to do, <clears throat> um, you're going to chain however many to match your stitch height. So I'm, I like doing half double crochets. So we're just going to chain one. And then we're going to do a half double crochet right here in this circle. So half double you yarn or yarn over, going to go into the circle itself. Grab your yarn and pull up a loop. Okay. You have three loops on your hook. One, two, and three. You're going to yarn over again and pull through all three. That's a half double crochet. And we're going to go ahead and do eight of those in here. Okay. So we're going to put eight of those in here while we wait and see if Maria comes in. She might have had something happen that she didn't make it back right on time. The beads on the crochet hook, you have to make sure that the... Um, the hole in the bead matches the size of the crochet hook that you're using. If not, you have to use one of the smaller steel hooks. The really, really, really tiny metal ones that they use for doily lace. And 
you grab your yarn and pull it through. Um, I did do uh, a video with the beaded crochet and it is up on my YouTube and it shows you exactly how I did it with both. With a 3.75 millimeter hook, which pony beads should fit on if you want to use a bead that big. But if you're using smaller beads like glass beads or whatever, seed beads, you're really going to have a hard time. You're going to have to thread those onto the yarn and make sure that you put plenty on. Because I don't have a crochet hook that will fit through a seed bead that will grab a hold of yarn and pull it through. So, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one more. That gives us eight half double crochets in our circle. And then, when we, when we, I just did that without even showing you. That one string that was wove through that was your tail end, you just grab it and pull. And it tightens that circle right up. Now, if you wanted to, you could mark this as your last stitch with a stitch marker and keep working in the round which is what home hooking was just discussing about a pattern, uh, that bucket hat. Instead of coming over here and slip stitching and then having to chain to start your next row, you would use a stitch marker and mark this as your last stitch of the row and then just keep on going, which gives you a seamless, there is no line, definite line that you can see like you did in the bucket hat pattern, one of the pictures had a pat, uh, picture of the top. You could see the line where your rose stopped across the top of the hat. Um, Jamie, I'm just showing right now the um, crocheting in a circle. Um, I was waiting for Marie. Uh, we had set up... Uh, live session here where I was going to assist her on making a crocheted teddy or crocheted a knitted teddy bear um, and I was going to do it right here on live with her and I'm not sure if Marie is here yet so I might end up doing something else and rescheduling with her I won't be doing too much because I only have about an hour and 10 minutes that I have available and I take a little break at 1030. But yeah, um, when you do, let's go ahead and just mark this with a stitch marker, the last marker or the last stitch. And I use a little stitch marker like this. It's not closed, so you can slip it in and out very easily. Different stitch markers have different purposes. Um, this one definitely would be for like making stuffed animals, uh, shapes, things like that. And I just put it through, just like I would put my crochet hook through to catch the, the stitches. I just put it right through both front and back loop of the stitch and leave it hang there. Now we're going to do that seamless and we're going to come over here into our next stitch which is in the top of this chain two and we're going to go ahead and do we're going to do two half doubles in each stitch all the way around which should give us 16 stitches. So we want to make sure that we don't get too wild with this gap in between here too. I'm going to keep our tension pretty tight when we put this together. And we want to do a half double here. Okay. Do another one. And then two half doubles in each stitch all the way around to that marker. And we're going to do two in that spot as well.
Okay, we're here to the marker. What I normally do is I take that marker out. Normally it goes in my mouth. <laughs> do those two half doubles in this last stitch here. And then you take and put your stitch marker back in that last stitch. You guys can see where I put that right into the last stitch there. And then as you're working this, you can see that it's just going to look like a seamless spiral. Instead of like in the picture of that pattern that we were working with, the basic bucket hat that's in my um, links in my TikTok. You um, don't have that line in, your, in the top of your hat. You won't have the line down the side either where the seams are going in the side. It'll just look like it just keeps flowing. Just like a like a snail shell, how it spirals. It'll just keep doing like that and keep getting bigger the more you increase it. And then this here, you can always come back, tighten this back up, because I don't always weave this in, but it'll allow you to tighten that back up when you weave in that. Normally I work over it when I do the first row but I didn't. I just left it go because I know I'm going to pull it out anyway. And then your next row would be two and one. Put two stitches in one and one in the next one. And then do two stitches here and one in the next one. And then your next row would be two in the first one and then you would do two single stitches. And then two in the next one and two single. And you would keep increasing like that until you had the circle as big as you wanted it to. And this just starts, it's a basic circle. It starts a circle head for the top of a lovey, which is just a tiny crocheted little blanket, knitted blanket. Um, your increases are done pretty much the same way with knitting too. So... Still kind of, I don't know if Marie's here. Yes, I know, this is crochet, but we were supposed to be doing a knitting project today. But I'm just, we compare knitting and crocheting too here. Yes, this is crochet. This would be knitting, using these. So, but... Increases are pretty much the same. You would you would work them pretty much the same. So I guess we're not doing the teddy bear. Debbie, was there anything else that you wanted to see that I could show you while you're here today? I am going to start tailoring my classes a little differently because these big projects are... Um, kind of overtaking everything that I'm trying to do myself. So I'm going to be teaching more towards the stitch aspect and combination of stitches to make certain designs and then giving you a pattern that you can use that on. Um, hats, gloves, things that are going to be useful, um, things like that. You're doing good watching. Okay, hopefully this will help inspire and uh, bring a little a little um, aha moment for you. I like it when people tell me that when I explain it <clears throat> that they understand it a little bit better. And I was hoping that Marie was here because I did not have a backup plan. Yeah, it makes more sense not to use it because your your piece just will, will just flow. So there are many different ways to crochet in a circle. Yeah, you can join it. You can just keep going round after round. Joining, you don't have to use a stitch marker round after round. It's recommended that you do so you know where you're stopping. Um, Liberty, I'm just demonstrating a circle here. Um, we were doing a basic bucket hat and it had a, um, you could see the seam line in the hat and just kind of demonstrating the different techniques of working in the round so you won't see a seam line. 
And it's basically, instead of joining your stitches together with a slip stitch, if you're familiar with uh, crochet, you would just start in the next stitch and start the first direction of your next round. Yeah. This here does make it a little difficult to count, but when you count, instead of trying to count it this way, because you would only see one row, you would count it down this way, because you can see one and two. You wouldn't want to count it where you, you end your row. You can even count it to the sides, but you never want to count it to the, towards the end row. Makes it a little harder to count. But yeah, this is just basic pretty much starting to do like any kind of stuffed animal that you wanted to do. Pretty much starts out in a circle in crochet and it works out from there. Um, we could go from here and I could make a teddy bear leg right now. <laughs> yeah, everybody, everybody learns. Everybody learns how to crochet. And, you know, you crochet in the round. You can crochet flat. Instead of keep going, you just turn your work over and you work back across um, blankets and stuff like that. Yep. But from here, to just make a basic, like if I wanted to say, okay, let's make a teddy bear leg. I would work this same number of stitches because this would be the bottom of his foot. This is currently 16 stitches. I would just work 16 stitches back this way that would make a tube. And then from there, I could make another one and make do the same number of rows to make a second tube. And you attach them together and make the body from there. I can show you that if you'd like. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to make a teddy bear today, even though it wasn't scheduled. Marie's not here. I'll have to um, hit her up with a message and um, see when she has time available. We're going to go ahead and make a teddy bear today. Okay. I am going to try to keep track of these rows. For the leg so we can match the other leg up. So we're going to go ahead with the half doubles and we're going to do one single or one one half double in each one, each stitch around. Now I'm going to show you this one thing that I'm going to do with this one here. I'm going to back back up here, take those out. I am going to work through the back loop and I'm going to show you what that does when I work through the back loop of the stitch only. Okay, these are reasons, <laughs> Debbie Good, <laughs> if you want to work along with me and you have a crochet hook, please join along with me. Um, I'm going to work through the back loop, just this back portion here, on all of these stitches. Normally I catch both, we're only going to catch the back loop. So, we're going to do half 16, 16 around. And we're doing it through the back loop. And you can see a little bit what that's doing already. Okay, and for comparison, I'm going to do a couple through the front loop. So I can show you the difference in the front loop ones I'm going to pull out. Because I want that little difference in there. Gives little details to your piece here. Now, you can see here, the first three stitches that I did, we have a little straight edge right here. These are going to curl back, and that little straight edge is going to be a nice little finished edge for the top of his leg. These next three that I had done, let's see here, you don't see that. You don't see that little edge right there because we caught both loops. Okay? Just little techniques that give your work a little extra pizzazz. So we'll go ahead on here, and hopefully I can get a good bit of this done today before I have to get off of here at 10.30. Pull some of this out and move this across the table here. 
and get this other one out of the way so we don't get them all mixed together. All right, here we go. And we're half doubling all the way around. Oh, we didn't even catch the whole stitch here. All the way around should be 16 stitches. And we're going to do a couple rows of this just to give him some legs. And you can see here, I'm going to take this stitch marker out. You can see here, this is already starting to make like a little cap. You can see that standing up there on the edge. And you see how that just made a nice little edge there. I'll put this on the bottom side because it did run it up around. Okay, because we're working in the round. But that will go to the bottom. Probably should have slip stitched just for that one round just to make it completely flat. But it's okay. All right, and we're just going to keep doing this, but we're going to go to doing both of them now because we want that little ring to stop we don't want it to continue on around you can if you want to do a little extra accent striping on your row for whatever reason uh, might look good if you're just working in the round like this for a basket I can also show you how to start an oval if you want to do like a tote bag and if you do your stitch count upright on your tote bag you've got any kind of lacy stitch you can do up the side and then of course you would want to put a lining in your tote bag if it was lacy and had holes in it get on around here to this stitch marker put that in there I take my stitch marker out and I'm going to put this back in so I don't forget to put it in. And I'm going to take my thing out and show you here. So now you just see me wildly whipping this around. This is already... Put this down in here. Already starting to build up almost like a little bowl. And again, you can see here. And like I said, I should have slip stitched this together. But we're just going to put that to the bottom. But you can see the little extra detail you got by only working through the back loop. That nice little rim around there. Okay. And then we're just going to do probably about four or five more rows just like this. And it's going to build up and we're going to have a little leg. And we'll do this on a more miniature scale here. We won't make great big long legs and stuff. Do about three or four more rows around. And then we'll make a second one. And I will show you better how we will attach to make sure that we don't run that little design element on the bottom around like a spiral like we did on this one. Pull some of this string out. I'm trying to pull the skinny yarn across the table. I like using the center pull, but sometimes to get it started off, you got to pull a good bit of it out because it's too tight. It's like every third stitch you're pulling it. Oh, there you are. We were just working a little bit of a teddy bear here. Um, I did want to discuss with you a little bit about the pattern. We didn't finish that one off. The pattern that I had um, shared with you to look at. Um, they're actually using a, a sport weight or a sock weight yarn. Yes, um, I'm going to be working on a knitted teddy bear with Marie. She just came in. Um, since we were talking about, uh, 
Debbie had asked about crocheting in a circle, I went ahead and started a circle. And while we were waiting for Marie, we were going to head and just starting a crochet teddy bear. But Marie's here now, and like I said, I was discussing with her the knitted pattern. Um, if you are going to do this with worsted weight yarn and the size needles for worsted weight yarn, you're going to end up with a three-foot teddy bear. So I don't know if you have a smaller weight yarn or if you're okay with a three-foot teddy bear. What was that that you would like to see lost? Is it lost or last survivor? They gray it out so bad. I can't see it that well. Yeah, they call for a size 2, a U.S. size 2 knitting needle. Um, I went up to a size 3 to accommodate the lower end of the sport weight yarn that I was going to demonstrate with. So it might make it a little bit bigger than 12 inches or the 12 and a half because I'm using a three. Um, but to go up to a size eight, anywhere from a six to an eight for worsted weight, it's going to make it tremendously bigger and it's going to call for a lot more yarn. Oh, the knitted bear. Yeah. And it's knitted flat. It's knitted flat. So that was something that I was interested in seeing too. It's knitted flat and then you fold it and seam it. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Is my internet not good? Is anyone else having an issue with me cutting in and out? No, no. Okay. Um, do you have the yarn and stuff for a crochet teddy bear? I can go ahead and start this over again since you're here. Um, not all knitted projects are done flat, no. No, they're not all done flat. Some are worked in the round. I'm working a sweater in the round right now. But yeah, I'm going to be working on that in another live this week. Um, it's just projects that I'm working on that I'll be doing. Um, I might not so much work a live with that one. I might just do a, a video. If I can do a, like a three-minute video and show you how I just to basically show you how I do it because I really can't talk and answer comments and all while I'm counting that many stitches. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and we'll start this um, crocheted one over. I don't think I can change the name of my live while it's going, but it was intended to be the knitted, the knitted teddy bear. I know I'm going to get a lot of comments that it's not knitted. <sighs> So we're just going to pull this all back out and start right over. So Marie, if you want to follow along, there is no pattern for this. This is just me on the fly because I've done enough stuffed animals and amigurumi that I can pretty much just make a basic chalky style stuffed animal and, you know, not have a real issue doing so. But um, I start out with the magic circle. I'll demonstrate that again. I hold the, the tail end of the yarn between my thumb and my ring finger. I wrap my index and middle finger. I create an X across the back side. When I flip my hand over, I hold the yarn that's going to the skein with my pinky right here just loosely. I put my crochet hook under the first, grab the second. When I come out, I spin it around so my needle is facing upward now just so I don't lose this loop. Okay, I come over here and I grab this and I pull this through that loop. 
trying not to make it snap so everything falls off. Now, when I let go of this, you don't want to untwist this. You want to leave this twisted just as it is. And we are going to be working our stitches right here. Okay. And since I like to do the half double, and I'm going to make sure I'm doing the half double right, we're going to start out with the half double. So we're going to chain one. And then a half double is a yarn over into the circle here. Grab a loop, which is also considered a yarn over. Pull it through, and you have three stitches. You're going to yarn over, and you're going to pull through all three of those stitches. Okay? We're going to do that eight times. Um, you can do single crochet if you like. Uh, with that and doing stuffed animals, you have to do... Most of them are in single crochet, but I'm just going to show you in double or half double crochet simply because it's the stitch that I like to do. And you can do them in this and it might make them a little bit bigger too. One, two, three, four, five. We need three more. Six, seven, eight. And I'm using a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. Now, Debbie, this is what you guys missed the last time because I'm just so quick to do it. Um, I need to make sure that I slow down and show you every single step so that the beginners. All right, well, if you want to check up on this, I do upload these to YouTube. There is a link in my TikTok, and this one will be put up later on this evening. So if anybody has to leave, these will be on YouTube later. You're going to take this string here on this end. keeps going in and out is anybody else having an issue with the with my my live going in and out if there is please let me know because then it is my internet issue and that is something that I must absolutely maintain my router is in this room so I should be getting the strongest signal nobody okay um, Marie maybe it's just your internet hun Okay, I'm going to go ahead and continue on, Marie. Maybe you can watch this on YouTube later. Um, that way, you know, I can at least keep going today. And I really only have probably another, maybe another hour. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on. Um, you're going to take this with the tail here and you're going to pull that. I don't, when I pull it, I'm going to move my needle out of the way here. I don't pinch down at the bottom of the stitches where they hook around. I hold up towards the top. So that way I don't pinch this tight and I can't pull. And it pulls really easy. And it tightens right up. So what I do is I now hold this, which is the tail end, and I work over it when I do my next row of stitches. Now here is where we're going to put our stitch marker in for our last stitch so that when we work back around the round we know that's where we have to stop that row. Okay. Now we're going to go over to our first half double on the previous row which is this first V here and we are going to start our next row. We're not going to slip stitch in here. We're going to make it to where we're just going to work in the round in crochet. Well, it's a different way to work in the round in crochet. It's not only one way, but it's a different way. So here we're going to start with half doubles again, and we're going to put two half doubles in each stitch all the way around. So we're going to have to keep our tension pretty tight because we don't want this gap to get too big. We don't want this loop up here to stretch out. So we're going to hold our tension pretty tight when we do this one. So you see how I'm starting to get a gap here? We're stretching out a little bit, but it'll close back up when we go around. Okay, so we're going to put two in here and two in each stitch around. Yeah, because we want one more, one more width around, and then we'll do the next row in the back loops. Okay. And this is increasing our circle. No, I didn't put two. I am just here going crazy. 
There we got two in that one. Just started half doubling all the way around. Got to have two in each one to make our circle bigger. And I knew it wasn't getting bigger because it was starting to do this, which meant I wasn't putting two stitches in each one. Now it's starting to lay flat like it should and be more like a circle. How'd I get my crochet hook through there? Get that out of the way. And do two in this one. And put our marker back in. Now, this round is the round, because that's going to be as, as big as his little leg's going to be. This is going to be the round where I'm going to work through the back loops. Okay? So, we're going to half double in each stitch all the way around using the back loop only. This one right here. We're not going to go through both. We're just going to grab the back loop. And we're going to do one half double in each one. When we come back around here, I'm going to show you a fancy little thing that I do to put this back together so that when I go to the next row, we have this complete circle with a line all the way around. And I'm doing a half double in each stitch all the way around to my marker. Now if you look here, this is where I want to stop doing the little circle because if I keep going it's going to bring that back up around this way I want to stop that right here okay so at this point what I'm going to do I'm going to work one more here and this one I might do both loops yeah that last one I'll do both loops and I should have done something at the beginning to make it come to a complete circle here Okay, but this one here I'm going to do in the back loop. So I'm going to take that stitch marker out. Or work in both loops, I mean. That way that little thing stops there. Okay. And that makes almost like a little cap there for us. I'm going to put my stitch marker back in so I don't lose my last stitch. And I'm going to work couple of rows just like this, 16 stitches, one in each stitch all the way around, for about four rows. And then I'm going to take it off and make another one exactly the same. Got caught on a little piece of thread there somewhere. You can go ahead and do four of these if you like, because we have to do arms too. If you want the arms the same size as the legs. Um, you'll also need stuffing because we will have to stuff these pieces as we go. And I don't know if I have enough stuffing to be able to stuff them proper today. And then we just move that stitch marker, mark the last stitch, and keep right on working right on around. This is the second row. Thank you for the follows. Thank you for the follows. I don't know if there was any comments while I was just talking. I'll have to stop here when I get back to uh, the end of the row here. And take a look and make sure. 
Okay, in the beginning, you're going to do your magic circle. Okay. And then you're going to do eight half double crochets. Are you a, are you a crochet or do you understand the crochet terms? I can show you when we start the second one because I'm going to make another one just like this. So I'm going to keep on going because I only got about two or three more rows to do and then we're going to start a second one. Okay. So I'll be starting a second one here in just about another two minutes. I also got to keep an eye on my time here because I only have until 1030 but I can come back around 1130 and we can work on this some more okay I need to do something with that I don't know if I worked over that or not I don't think I did that string is getting in my way I'm just doing half doubles all the way around and I'm working with the 3.75 millimeter crochet hook or it's a US size 5 or an F. And I will be doing another one of these here in just a minute, Maria. Or Marie, I'm sorry. I was watching a TikTok video today and this one lady, I don't know how in the heck she does it, she is working with a 0.5 millimeter crochet hook and she is crocheting with sewing thread and she is making granny squares. She has 300 granny squares done and she put her hand beside the granny squares and it was like really really tiny okay I'm gonna do one more row and then I'm going to start the other one Maria and I want to try and get these at least put together today with the start of a body you will do the hands the exact same way as I'm doing these um, I only did two rows on the bottom here and um, on the third row I worked through the back loop only and I put eight stitches in the the first row and then doubled the stitches for the second row and then work those up we're gonna stop this right here Okay, and I'm going to go into this next stitch and do a slip stitch so that makes that all nice and even there for me across the top for when I come back to pick this up. And I still haven't found my little gold scissor. I don't know what happened to it. I have scissors everywhere I sit because I don't like to carry stuff from place to place. And this is what we've got here. I'm going to show you how to do this again and you're going to make four of these okay if you want the legs to be a little bit bigger than the arms do a third round around on the bottom and I'll make these I'll show you the um, how to do a bigger leg we'll make these the arms and I'll show you how to do a bigger leg because we'll do three rounds on the bottom for the legs so this will be one of the arms. You can actually make baskets like this. You can make, um, just you just keep going around and around with the rounds. Your first round will be 8, 10, 12. Whatever your first round is, you're going to double it for the second round. And then the third round, you're going to add whatever your first round was to that. So you're going to do 2 and 1, and then 1 in the next stitch. 
On the next row you're going to do two in one and then one in one stitch and one in one stitch and you're going to repeat that around. And the next one is going to be two and three, you know, two with one, one and one, which I'm about to show you. And if you want the circle to be bigger, you just keep going in those increments. The stitches, the stitch count after your the one you do two in just keeps increasing for each round until you get it as big as you want it. And then you just work that number of stitches from your last round, and that's how many you work around that you can count for your rounds going up the side. So we're going to go ahead, and this one's going to be the leg. So we're still going to need our stitch marker here. And again, I'm doing the magic circle. I hold the yarn between my thumb and ring finger. I wrap around my index and middle finger, create an X in the back. In the front, you'll have two separate lines, and I hold the, the yarn that goes to the skein right here, just like this. Underneath, grab the back one. When I come through here, it's a little harder for you to see. I just kind of twist my needle to the top so that I don't lose that loop as I go over here to grab this one. And I will show you this every time that I do it. And when you take your fingers out of the middle, this is twisted together. Leave it twisted. Don't untwist it. Okay. We're going to go ahead and we are going to work eight stitches in. Actually, let's go ahead and do, let's go ahead and do 12. We'll do 12 and it'll make it bigger anyway. And then we won't have to do so many rounds. We can still do two rounds. So we're going to do 12 half doubles in this circle. So we're going to chain one for our stitch height. Then we are going to yarn over and again do half doubles in this circle, 12 of them. And see how you can have this circle this big and you could go from 8 to 12. You could even do 24 in here if you wanted to. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I'll give everybody else who's crocheting with me a chance to catch up. This is still weaved in underneath of here. Um, doing it the old way where you would secure the yarn onto your needle, chain four, and then slip stitch back into the first chain, you couldn't get more than a certain number of stitches in that hole. With this, if you wanted to change the number of stitches, you just do it. You don't have to count, oh, well, how many chains do I need to put 24 stitches in that hole? You know, this you just put the stitches in there and then you tighten it up. You can put however many stitches you want in the magic circle, which makes it a great technique to use. So at this point, again, I don't pinch it down here. I grab it up top, and then I just, the string that's the tail, just pull it. And it'll pull right shut. You have to make sure that you're crocheting in the circle as you're doing it. Don't catch any scrap of yarn or anything anywhere, otherwise it won't pull. And then what I normally do is I work over this when I do my next row. I hold it next to the stitches and I work over it so that I don't have to weave it in. And I'm going to do that with this round. And we're going to go ahead and mark this. And we're going to put two half doubles in each stitch all the way around to this marker. So this is going to make it bigger because we put more stitches in it from the beginning. And we're just going to come over here to the next stitch and go with our half doubles again, two in each one. A little fiddly starting off because I am, you see how I'm holding that tail back here and I'm working it through as I'm doing my stitches. I'm covering it up so I don't have to weave it in. I like to weave stuff in as I go if I can. And I work right over it. When I go in, it's over my needle. When I grab my yarn, it works right over top of it. So it locks it right up underneath of there. And 
that's one end that you can just cut off. Okay, keep going. Two in each stitch around. And I'll do that for about three or four stitches. And then normally I just let it hang, but because this is in my way, I'm going to cut this off. And it is woven in. It's gone. You can see a little piece of it right there. All right, and we're going to keep right on working along. Two in each stitch all the way around. And this is going to be the foot for our teddy bear. And it is 10 o'clock. So for anybody interested, Maria, I will be back after 11 if you are available at that time. Um, if you can, I can come back. I'm not going to leave here for at least another 20 minutes. Um, so that way I can continue working with you until I absolutely have to get off the, here. Uh, my husband calls to check on me to make sure I'm all right on his lunch break. Okay, and we've worked that all the way around. And you can see that by adding extra stitches in the middle here that this is already bigger than this. Just by a little bit, we didn't add extra rounds, we added extra stitches. Okay? So this way we're keeping our rounds the same but we're going to have a bigger leg. Just a little bit bigger than the the arm that we're going to use. Okay? So we're going to continue on around and here's where we're going to do our back loop stitching again. So we're going to start that in the next stitch, which is right here, and we're going to start working in the back loops. So what I'm effectively going to do right now is take this last stitch out, which I should have done on the other side, and I'm going to work this last stitch through the back loop, and I just want to see for myself make sure I got a hold of all the plies there if it's going to give me the closed circle that I want and it's probably not but we're going to try it out anyway and see no it won't because it's going into the middle right now but anyway we're going to work through the back loops and we're going to do one half double in each stitch all the way around <coughs> I was hoping to have two of these done so I could at least sew the body together. Yeah, sizing has a lot to do with with wearables. Um, it definitely has to do with um, the size of your amigurumi. If you don't use the right size needle, you definitely will get a larger size. Um, it doesn't really matter what size yarn you want to use. You just have to use the appropriate size needle. So if you really do want a miniature, you can take this same pattern that I'm doing right now, and you can do it with a smaller yarn, um, with a sport weight yarn. It will be smaller, not by much. Um, but if you went down to like a sock weight yarn, or a fingering weight yarn that did make it look a little bit better or a fingering weight yarn um, it would make it smaller and definitely if you were doing it that did make it look a little better there to have our our nice little flat edge there all the way around yeah if you go down to really small small stuff um, sewing thread you could make a teddy bear following this same pattern, but it would be immensely smaller than what I'm making now. So your needle size does affect your project a lot. Now we're just going to keep doing this half double. We're going to do both loops from here on out. And we're going to do and we're going to do a couple rows. I want to try to get through this quickly. I 
do not believe that I'm going to be able to make it to do the body part since we did um, a leg so I could show you that it would be bigger. Um, if any of you want to come back at 11, please give me a yes. Yeah. Yeah, I do have some really tiny hooks. Um, I can come back, um, say 1130, and we can start this up again if everyone wants to be here at 1130. Okay. 1130, I will definitely be back. But I am going to continue until about 1020, 1025. <clears throat> 1030 is, <clears throat> excuse me, the latest that I'll stay on so that I can still make the phone call. As he gets to worrying about me, my health hasn't been the greatest here lately and for a while, but here lately it's kind of went downhill pretty quick. But um, if I don't answer the phone, he comes home from work. All right, we're making this second row of half doubles that are all through both loops. Um, I'll have to show you um, what I'm going to try and do. I do have classes on Tuesday, and I think I'm going to tailor my classes just a little bit different here on TikTok. Um, I want to show you stitches and ways that you can utilize those stitches for smaller projects so that way I can show a completed project. And what I'm probably going to do is break my classes up into two classes on Tuesdays. And I do upload all my videos to YouTube. And then I'll be here live during the week where I can help you with things other than what, I've, what I'm showing. And just working on some of my own projects too. I don't know if I could come on a live and just, I don't think I could just do it and not have. All right, Debbie, have a good day, honey. I just took that out of there. I need to do that last stitch. Put this back in. And we're going to work a couple more rounds. And then what I'm actually going to do is, oops. We're going to stick that in there and it'll be all right. Right over here. Read up from my thing. My stitch marker fell out. I hit it. It's one bad thing about those that slip in. They're easy to get in and out, but they're just as easy to knock out as you're working around. I try to make sure I twist them in there pretty good. But the other ones that really secure in there, you have to stop and unsnap and then snap back. And that I don't like to be slowed down like that. This right here, what I'm doing, the shorter legs, you could also make a turtle if you wanted to from this point. Make four little short legs like this and then make a round turtle shell. But yeah, this is how you make a leg. It's a little chunky leg. Just start off with a circle and make it as big as you want. And then you work four of them up and then you work the body around it. If you have to do like an underbody, like an elephant, um, I would have the four legs positioned off, but I would have to do, if I was creating it myself, you would have the four legs, the two front and the two back legs. <clears throat> you might have to make a flat panel in between here and then work around to connect the legs to it 